Hey everyone, uh, welcome to part three of part three, Overcoming Sin Bible Study. Again, my name is Josh, and uh, I thank you for coming back and watching this video. Um, last off is, uh, we left off with that you have a destiny and hell wants to stop you. And we were in 1 Peter 5, 8, and in John 10, 10. Um, and again, like, uh, Jesus' purpose is to give us a rich and satisfying life, to do um, God's will. And a lot of times God's will is not something that's burdensome. Um, but when we really have intimacy with the Lord, um, the things that he asks us to do, a lot of times we're just like, yeah, I'll do it because I love you, God. I'll do it because I love you. Um, your destiny Everyone has a destiny. Everyone has a calling. It's all going to look different. We should actually stop saying like, oh, that person has a calling from the Lord. Every one of us has a calling from the Lord. It's just that in human eyes, human understanding, and maybe that this person is destined to become president of the United States and that person is going to be the next uh, Billy Graham. Um, this person is going to be the next faith healer that's going to heal hundreds of thousands of people. These are going to be the people that usher in the next uh, uh, Great Awakening. Um, and you're like, but I'm just this person working in an office or working in a warehouse. You know, God asks us to be faithful with the little or the much that he's given us. Um, it may be your purpose to go from the jobs that he provides you. It may be jobs that you love. But to be bold in your faith and talk about Christ to others. Um, it doesn't like to, to the Lord. And I want to give you this example. To the Lord, you are as if let's say the Lord's like puts a thousand people before you to speak uh, Christ uh, to them or show your testimony to them, and and let's say out of those thousand, only fifteen people accept Christ that you personally lead them to. If those were the thousand people that you were supposed to talk to, if those were the 15 people that you were supposed to lead to Christ and you were faithful in that, when you get to heaven, God's going to say, uh, or Jesus is going to tell you like, you know, good and faithful servants. Because you did exactly everything that the Lord wanted you to do. And you're as faithful as the evangelist or the pastor that may have led a hundred thousand people to Christ. Because you did the what the Lord's will was for your life, you can't compare yourself to what Tom is doing over there or what Jenny is doing over there. Their lives may look more grand or may look, wow, I wish I could have their freedom to do that or I wish I can have that strength or that power or that authority. You need to look at what the Lord wants you to do and ask for his peace and ask for just like his, his wisdom and to be content with that. Because man, I'll, I'll tell you what, when you're content and you're at peace with your life and whatever the Lord has placed in front of you to do, it is the best place. I'm telling you, it is. So let me just pause right here. I'm going to just pray for you right now and say, like, Lord, I pray that you will reveal your will in a clear and special manner to everyone that's listening. I pray, Lord, that those that are struggling to be at peace or be content of where they're at. Lord, if they're if they're exactly where they need to be, Lord, I pray you'll give them peace right now. You give them contentment right now from heaven. 
ministering angels from heaven, just deliver that peace, deliver that contentment right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, for those that need to move, that are not, that are being stagnant, that need to move, Lord, make it abundantly clear to them. Show them the truth. And give them direction to know where to go. In Jesus' name I pray this. To everyone listening. Amen. Yeah, because I've been there. I've 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 struggled, I've staggered, I've um, overthought things to the point where I've missed so many opportunities in my life. And I regret them. It was, oh, you shouldn't have regrets. I have regrets. I think it's healthy to have regrets. It's like, you know what? I don't want to go back to that old way of doing things, if it's a bad thing. So, um, again, you have a destiny. Hell wants to stop you. Devil wants to stop you. Okay? He's an accuser. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy everything that's good and holy in your life. Okay? Next thing, your prayers are powerful. Let's go to James, the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16. Confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed. For tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. We have to understand that our prayers are powerful. That if we are sons and daughters of the Most High God, God of the universe, Jesus, our healer, Jesus, our savior, Jesus, the creator of all things, and we are to imitate Christ, imitate Christ and everything that he did. Of course, we don't receive his glory, but I think everything else is pretty much fair game. We're not... Again, we're not to receive his glory. We're not to receive praise and glory due to him. There may be people that praise us or, or give us, um, like how the Bible says, um, give honor to uh, honors do. If someone wants to honor you, it's a biblical thing. It's not, it, you don't, don't go into your clamshell of like, well, no. You know, it's like, you know, it's all the Lord's and all this. You know, just say, thank you, know, welcome or say, Thank you for that compliment. It was very nice, but you know, uh, I praise Jesus, and and I and I, it's Jesus through me that enables me to be obedient to be able to do His will in my life, and I'm thankful for that. But I am thankful for your comment. Um, you know, you can rejoice with the Lord and Jesus together. Don't let it be like, oh no, like I don't want to sin by getting a compliment for something I did for the Lord. It's not a sin. It is not a sin, guys. No. Your prayers are powerful. Um, one thing that I need to continue to practice is prevailing prayer. Um, and it's not repetitious prayer that that Jesus essentially says that is um, sinful, thinking like, oh, the people, the the pagan or the the religious leader that a religious person that says like if they continue saying the same rep rep repetitious prayer, that the Lord's going to do it finally because they said the prayer. And I'm, I'm hey, if this offends you, I'm sorry, but repetitious prayers like how Mary are saying the Lord's prayer repetitiously over and over again, expecting something to happen. Is it wrong to pray it? No, but I, it's, I believe Jesus laid out an example to pray, how to pray it. He did not, he did not say to repeat that prayer over and over and over and over again. He didn't. He gave, essentially, think of like a syllabus. He gave an example and it's like, okay, this is how you would pray. This is not how, this is this is how, not what. Okay. Or this is what you should only pray. 
Bible says pray about everything. Pray about everything. Um, you need wisdom. You need to pray for someone's healing. You need a job. You need to pray for someone else's job. You need to pray that someone overcomes a sin. You know, everything. Um, and know that your prayers are are heard. And what I believe, and those things, something that's been taught, and I really believe this, a lot of your righteous prayers are answered instantaneously in heaven, but it's the warfare, it's the demonic, it's hell, it's Satan that are keeping those answers of prayer from reaching us, from reaching this earth. Warfare. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. If he can't do that, he's going to hinder everything good in our lives to, to the maximum ability. Um, because in, in heaven, there's not going to be any hindrance from the enemy. Anything that we ask, anything that we want, anything that, that needs to get done, it gets done like that instantaneously. There's no hindrance. Um, we're here, things are slow. Here, things are hindered. Things There's sin here. There may be uh, answers to prayers that require the obedience of another person to do. One quick example, not in my life, but um, I'm just saying this hypothetical uh, thing. You could be asking for the Lord to help you get out of debt faster. You're, maybe you're saying like, Lord, I need, um, Lord, you said that you're going to provide for all my needs, but I'm about to become late in my rent or late in my thing because my hours were cut or something. Um, and your prayer, again, because God's not going to supernaturally reveal a thousand dollars for your rent or however much your rent is. Your prayer is going up to heaven and it's going to the person that the Lord knows has the money to give and, and it's kind of saying like this, hey, hey, tap, 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 tap. You need to go to this person or you need to go to, let's say someone else from your church that knows you, like you need to go to Dave's house and you need to give him $1,200. Or you need to go to Stacy's house and you need to tell her that you're going to pay their month's rent or mortgage. That's how things work. Sometimes it doesn't need prayer. Sometimes like the Lord is just going to intervene on your behalf. But there's sometimes that it, it requires prayer, it requires action from us. We can't be Christians that say, well, let things be, let... Let bygones be bygones, let uh, say la vie, you know, if the Lord wants me to have it, I'll have it. That's not in God's word. I'm sorry, it is not. What does the word of God say? Whatever you ask in my name, the Father will do. It doesn't say, whatever the Lord wants you to have, then he'll let you have it. That theology, that lie needs to stop. And if you can find the verse that says that if the Lord wants me to have it, I'll have it. Basically, just having just a very flippant way of Christianity. Christianity is not a flippant religion. It is not. The word of God says, like, you know, the, the, the violent take it by force. Why would God put that if we're supposed to be just like, oh, well, the Lord wants me to have peace, or the Lord wants me to get married, or the Lord wants me to have joy, if the Lord wants me to have a job, then he'll, you know, he'll give it to me if I deserve it. That doesn't mean that we're, we're making God um, a slot machine or a genie. How do I put this without making another series? <laughs> That's if the Lord doesn't ask me to do another series, but it's putting a demand, a righteous demand on what's already yours in heaven.
and conversing with the Lord, say, Lord, your word says that you're going to provide for all my needs, and I have a big need, Lord, and I need your help. Um, the Lord may do a couple things. He may um, give you favor, and suddenly your employer says, hey, so I was going to cut your hours again this week, but um, I actually need you for your regular shift. Or, hey, I need you to work overtime. Or um, if you're a waiter or waitress, the person that you waited for gave you a big tip. Um, or the Lord prompts in your heart, and you got to be humble. Um, go to the pastor, go to the church. Let me say, oh, we would love to help you. We have a benevolence fund or someone dropped off a check for that same amount. And we've been praying about who to give it to and you're the one. It could be any number of scenarios. God is faithful. The God's word is true. Okay. He's going to provide for all your needs. He's going to provide for all your needs. Okay believe that all right last point here for part three of part three you are who christ says you are not your sin okay one of the worst things that we can tell people is um he's always a liar he's always a pervert He's always been a pervert. He's just going to always be one. Guys, our words have power. Don't say that. Renounce it. Repent of it. And release them from your words. From the from that, from that those word uh, curses. Don't say things that apply to someone as if it's going to be something forever. Because one of the worst things you're doing is like, Jesus... You can't set free everybody because John over there, he's just a pervert and he's always going to be a pervert. And there's nothing that you can do, Jesus. You basically might as well say that when you say a statement like that. Our words are powerful and we need to be careful with our words. Okay. Because we're going to be condemned or we're going to be acquitted based on the words that we speak. That's in the word of God. All right. So we need to speak life. And we can't, we can't like, if that person, like, what's the old adage? If you, there's, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say nothing at all. That's, that applies big time here. If someone's hurt you and, you know, maybe one of your friends or your girlfriends wants to start gossiping I was like oh look how bad you know this person is refuse to start talking about that person because it is sin it is gossip and it's going to be a trap for you it's going to just increase the bitterness or and hatred or both that you have in your heart for that person and then suddenly the love that the, the, the word of God that God asks us to have love for everybody, suddenly you don't you don't have love for everybody, just except everyone except that person. So if you're hurt, if you're in a bad situation with that person, just it doesn't mean that like if that person's hurting you or abusing you that you keep quiet about it. It's like, let's say you're out of that situation, or you're in that situation, or you're in transition. Um, like I said in the beginning of, I think it was part one of this, part three. No matter what you've been through, whatever it's you've gone through, it doesn't give you a free pass in the Lord's eyes. The, the Lord's not going to lie you to harbor bitterness or harbor hatred or speak foul language or speak curses to someone that's hurt you just because you've been hurt 
There's no exemption there. You sin, you sin. And that might be hard. And that might be hard to hear. But that's the truth. That's the truth, guys. If there's nothing nice that you want to talk about that person, just don't say anything. If someone wants to start a conversation, start bashing that person, say, you know what? That person has hurt me, but I, I don't want to sin by talking gossip and talking that behind that person's back. But you know what he does? He does that all it, or she does that all the time. I'm choosing not to do that as hard as it might be. I Let's talk about something else. You give place for the Lord to work in your heart, to work in your life. Don't let the enemy further steal from you what he's already stolen from you, what other people have done in your life. That's, that truth has got to be said. You are who Christ says you are, not your sin. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. A radical um, teaching slash phrase was that um, I'm a just a forgiven sinner. According to that verse, that's not true. That is, I am a new creation. I am new cre creature in Christ Jesus. I walk victoriously. I am a son of God. I am, you know, for your women, I am a daughter of the Most High. I live in righteousness. Do we sin occasionally? Yes. But that does not define us. That does not define you, okay? Sin does not and does not have to define you. It may be a lost battle, but you have not lost a war. We have already come the, the enemy at the end. We've won essentially the war. We just got to make sure that we're winning these battles until Jesus calls us home or we're, res you know, we're called up by the mighty trumpets, as it says in Revelation. Read Revelation. I know it's, it can be intense or hard, but, oh man, it's got an amazing ending and we win. <laughs> so... Just because, let's say, you've, you're at a place where you've uh, had victory in your life, and but you're constantly condemned or the enemy is consistently like, reminding you of your past. Like, look what you've done on your past. Look what you've done. You're just going to do it again. Those are lies. Don't listen to the enemy. Rebuke the enemy. Okay? You are a new person in Christ Jesus, okay? The Lord loves you. Jesus loves you. Holy Spirit loves you and wants to enable you, and he is the great helper. Jesus is the one that sent the Holy Spirit to help you. I want to encourage you. This is the uh, end of part three. There's going to be uh, part four. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to do that soon. Um, I hope this has blessed you. Um, and, uh, I really hope that this is going to help a lot of people share this out to anybody that you think needs to, um, hear this. May I just speak blessing to you, um, brother and, or sister in Christ, or maybe you don't know Jesus. John three sixteen seventeen says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only uh, his only son that whoever believes in him basically God delivered basically Jesus died on the cross for our sins he died for us he died 2,000 years ago to be the perfect sin sacrifice 
for the bad things that we've done to restore a relationship with God. Verse 17 of John 3 says that for God did not send him or Jesus into the world to condemn us. So that's not that's not the main reason. It's not condemnation. Just say, Jesus, I am a sinner. I've done bad things. And I want you in my life. I give you my life. I want you to be the Lord over my life. I give you my life so that I know that my, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. I thank you, Jesus, for saving me and know that I am now yours. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that, then you are now a Christian. You are um, one that has the ability now to commune with the Lord, with Christ. You now have the Holy Spirit. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. And for those of you um, also uh, that are saved, um, and you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, remember, the disciples in the book of Acts essentially were saved. They believed in Jesus. And remember, there's the mighty wind. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit that came in this mighty, sounded like a mighty wind. And speaking in other languages and, you know, uh, things like that. Read the book of Acts. Um, just say right now, Jesus, I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Baptize me now. Baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Baptize me in fire. The Holy Fire. Empower me to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Again, I hope this was helpful. And just look out for um, the last part four of the Overcoming Sin Bible Study. See you guys.